So just QE light is a loan. Now it's a loan at par for one year with interest. So if I'm a distressed bank and I'm underwater on my treasuries, I can now present them to the Fed, not through the discount window. I could still use a discount window, but I prefer the BTFB if I was a bank. I get par, uh, you know, 100% of this asset, the, the reserves I will get for one year, but I have to pay about 4.7% interest on that. I think it's even a little higher than that now. So if I'm a bank that's, you know, suffering through a illiquidity crisis, I'm probably not going to go out and make a lot of stupid loans <laughs> with my reserves that I know I have to send back to the Fed in a year with interest at par, because there's no guarantee that my note that I've given to the Fed is going to be worth par when I get it back. Right. So this is, I, I think it's creating more like a zombie, a zombified banking system rather mm -hmm. than one that's going to go bonkers with QE. Um, so you have, you have that, you have that phenomenon to, you know, $400 billion in two weeks. And you mentioned the TGA. So think of the TGA, like, a form of QE. It's it's reserves and cash that the treasury uses to pay bills and it sits at the Fed. It used to be about a half a trillion dollars. Now it's down to, I think some estimates are down as low as $60 billion. That's yeah. why we're supposed to default on default. You know, we'll talk about that too on, um, on June 1st. Um, but once the treasury, once this deal gets done, and I think it will get done, but it's a lot harder this time. This time, can I just touch on why it's going to be a lot harder this time? Just absolutely, briefly, because we have people like Matt Gates in in, in Congress, and you know, I happen to like the guy, so I'm not I'm not saying that any, I'm not disparaging him in any way. But he, in other words, Congress passed a bill that they sent to the Senate, and it never even got a vote, never went to the floor of the Senate. I'm not surprised. Um, but that bill was, hey, we'll, we will raise the debt ceiling if you do the following, which is dramatically and trenchantly cut spending. Now, when the deal gets done, and I think it will get done, but it's going to take a lot longer because McCarthy wants to hold the gavel, the Speaker of the House. If he goes and gets this deal done with mostly Democratic votes, he will lose his speakership. And of, of course, what do people want in Washington more than anything? Even more power. than making a deal, you know, they want power. Did you say that? Did I hear you say power? Yeah, power. Yeah. That's why you're a genius. That's why you run the most popular web program in, on, <laughs> in the planet. They want to hold on to power. So when the markets tell them, "Hey, hey, hey, uh, hey, jerks, we it, we need to we need to find a settlement here because you know stock prices are crashing and everybody's 401k is going into the into the toilet," then they'll reach a decision. They'll they'll meet. They'll they'll agree. But it's going to take a lot longer because, again, you have, you know, you have these MAGA Republicans in there who just don't want to deal at all. Some of them just won't raise a debt ceiling. I don't care what you do. We're at thirty-two trillion, and we ain't going a dollar higher than that. But when the deal actually gets done, the TGA has to be refilled, and they do that by selling treasuries, taking those reserves, and putting, them, parking them at the Fed, out of the banking system. That's that's going to be a significant tightening. So you have zombie banks and, and a significant, by the way, the Fed's balance sheet is now just shrinking again. It, it went from eight, 8.3 trillion, almost back to 9 trillion, right? In, in, a, in a matter of a couple of weeks, um, 8.7, 8.8 trillion. And now it's back to going, heading very quickly back to 8.3 trillion. I, I wouldn't be surprised if it was there by the end of this week. We get the data on that um, Thursday. Mm -hmm. So, um, so we're now shrinking the, the base money supply. We're going to be refilling the TGA. And I think that's enough to bring the illiquidity scenario back to the fore. And you're, you're going to start to get more runs on banks. And I don't think I touched on this, Adam, and I do apologize for rambling as I tend to There's do. There's a lot to cover here. It's all good. The problem with banks was extent because banks can't make payments on their depositors, their demand deposits, they can't give them an interest rate that is equal to or greater than their assets, which are their loans. That's the primary issue here. So you go into a bank and the calculation is you go to your regional bank, your favorite one, and you say, hmm, I have an awful lot of money here, way above my uh, FDIC insured limit. And 
you know, you're giving me five basis points on my demand deposit. And even if I get a time deposit, you're talking about just a few, a few small hundreds of basis points. But alternatively, I could take my money and go to a money market fund and get 5% on a zero to three month T-bill. Let me see what I want to do. Yeah, I'll see you later. Right. And that's what's happening. The banks have no choice because if they raise their deposits to match their assets, they're in deep trouble. They're insolvent. But... You know, QT is a removal of reserves from the banking system. I take my deposits out of my bank. It's a removal of deposits from the banking system. That's causing not only, you know, not only strains banks' balance sheets, but also further inhibits the amount of credit into the system. More monetary tightening. And I hasten to add, last thing I'll say before I let you back in, is that when they do agree on this debt deal, and I think they will after much duress, you are going to see a fiscal tightening on top of the monetary tightening. We haven't really had the fiscal tightening yet. We had a tangential fis fiscal tightening, which was a second derivative play from getting over the COVID relief. Now we're going to see an actual reduction in year-over-year -year spending. Very possible to happen if we reach this deal, if and when we reach this deal. So you're gonna have fiscal and monetary tightening. Okay, and, and let's dig into that for a second. So you expect the fiscal tightening to happen, uh, why? Because uh, some may are, I mean, they may have to concede, right? So they, there might be spending concessions coming out of this deal. But like I said earlier, this deal will also theoretically allow them to start uh, funding the Inflation Reduction Act again, which yeah. will be putting money out there. So. Well, right now uh, the money is coming out there. The money's coming from the TGA. So the, mo the money supply is increasing right now. Um, when they agree to the deal, see what was factored into GDP uh, forecasts and earnings growth forecast was a resolution to the debt ceiling, an automatic resolution to the debt ceiling where we would issue all the debt that was already promised by these contracts, these government right. contracts approved by Congress. Well, those contracts are going to be renegotiated. And there's going to be a lot less debt issued. And we have a debt-based monetary system. So I believe it's going to be a fist, you know, on a rate of change basis, it'll be a fiscal tightening that will occur from what has been projected to be out there in 2023 and beyond. Okay, got <laughs> it. So, so, so forecasts will have to be brought down. Obviously, that's going to impact markets that are currently right. priced to the status quo. Okay, right. totally makes sense. Um all right, look, I, 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 I want to get to your model because I know that that's going to be the real interesting meat of this conversation, though it's been fascinating uh, already. <laughs> Hasn't there been are, interesting yet. 